Hey y'all, it is time once again for the Myth Wits, that show, you know, that show dedicated to all things geek pop culture, constantly drenched in absurdity, still coated with sarcasm. Yep, same intro we do every week. Every week we bring on an industry guest to talk about the ever-expanding Geekoverse. We do our dance to be funny, but there are no guarantees. As always, I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and joining me on this episode is my uh, horror growth appendage alien egg-like thing, Mike Kafis. Shh. The, my favorite show is on, okay? The Mythwits. Be quiet. All right. And on this episode, we are joined by Phil Rossi. Hey, hey, what's going on, everybody? Hey, Phil. You picked a good night to tune in. Yeah, excellent. So Phil is an author, podcaster, musician, and Twitch streamer. He has been podcasting since 2006, releasing his debut sci-fi horror podcast novel, Crescent, which is fucking fantastic <laughs> if you've never read it. Uh, he released that in 2007 to much acclaim, much deserved acclaim. Uh, since then, Phil has gone on to write and podcast many more stories that have kept people up at night, rightfully so. I think that one Roadkill got to me. I, I was reading that one. That was pretty crazy. Oh, hey. Wow, I haven't thought about that one in a while. Yeah, that Roadkill. Was... Here, I'll give you guys a bit of uh, a bit of trivia for you that uh, I don't know if I ever st outright stated this or implied it or otherwise, but Roadkill is actually tied into my novel Harvey. It takes place in the Harvey universe, and we'll just okay. leave it at that. Oh, the oh, Harvey right. verse. The Harvey verse, okay. which could be part of a greater verse. Who knows? Very I know. Cool. <laughs> I know. I know these things. I better fucking know them, right? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um. So, so one of the things that that I've started, uh, you know, I've started, I've started down the road of writing. So I did Nano Rimo this year. Good for I you. Got a novel, a good chunk of a novel in the bank. I'm finishing off a few more things, and next month I'm going to go back to writing on it again because I've got a. I got a project I'm working on that I'm going to be out of town for, and there's going to be a lot of hurry up and wait. You know, the army, it's an army project. So yeah. a lot of hurry up and wait. I'm sitting around with nothing to do until there's a lot to do. <laughs> so I figure I'm going to hit back into the book and do some more stuff with it. Um, but, you know, how, how difficult is it when you start writing in a universe and you've got this universe really fleshed out? um to then abandon that universe and go do something else like don't you like do you ever like god i want to get back to that universe and write again it's tough i i think part of it is that oh man i want to still be writing there or i want to get back to it but for me uh there's also a certain amount of anxiety that shit if i'm gone too long you know i'm gonna lose the vibe and then what am i gonna do to kind of get that back I think for me, it's it's. I think the anxiety of that overrides the just the the basic desire to get back to it. Um, yeah, so I know that's something that I've experienced uh, over the last however many years since I did Crescent and and had talked on and on about doing a follow up to Crescent, and then finally here I am. It's uh, what more than ten years later, where it finally hit me that this is something that's going to happen. Uh, I gotta, I gotta figure some shit out because I've been out of this universe for a long time. <laughs> you might as well jump on and enjoy the ride. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so does that include like, will you have to go back? Do you think it, I'm assuming you're going to have to go back? Cause like a lot of people, I mean, I don't know. All right, so I don't know if people realize this, but when you write something, um, and you write a big, long tale of words, uh, <laughs> things change as you're writing it. Like you had this plan that you're going to write this thing out and you start All writing it and shit All changes. I mean, completely changes. And then the you time. go back and you're like, I want to fix this and fix that. And this changes and that changes. And then when you're done the novel and you release it, at least, uh, you know, where I am in my book that, I, that are, or the, the part of the book that I wrote, I don't even know where I am. I am literally going to have to go back and read everything I wrote before I start writing on yeah. it again. Yeah. And you know, I'll tell you though, that's, um, I mean, let's face it, you would some, in a perfect world, you could do a project and stick with it to the end, but that doesn't always happen, right? And even even sometimes just a couple weeks is enough to throw you off and and you gotta be kind of gotta, you gotta go back. I mean, that's that's the only way to, to, to pick up where you, <laughs> to pick up where you are is to go back, you know, however, however long in the book. And so for me with Crescent, um, it's kind of been this sort of confluence of things I've had on my mind for the last several years. And, and mo foremost has been, do I want to do a second edition of, of Crescent? And if any of my, 
you know, Discord communities out there listening, they've kind of heard this before, but, uh, you know, I, there are many conflicts that you're faced with when you, when you're considering doing, uh, any kind of second edition, you know, there's the school of thought that, okay, well, I finished this book and, and that's done, right? It's done. I shouldn't go back to it. The work is as it stands. And then there's the other, you know, thought in my mind that, well, I'm a much different writer than I was, you know, however many years ago when I, you know, more than 10 years ago when I put out Crescent. So those have been two things that have kind of been warring with each other. And, and finally, you know, I said, well, you know what, I ha I've got to get back into it anyway, right? I, if I want to write this sequel and I want to do it right, and I don't want it to seem like it's this weird one-off thing that has no, <laughs> no cohesion with the original, I got to go back anyway. And so I made the decision and uh, starting uh, in mid-February, I started to uh, rewrite on the uh, Crescent second edition. And nice. I am actually very happy that I did because I, I'm, my eyes, you know, are, <laughs> I'm seeing things differently. Uh, I can't say a great deal is changing, but things are changing in, in meaningful ways. And, um, I, I feel like there are these un, there, and I've encountered many of them already, these unrealized opportunities where the terror can just be cranked up. And I've had a couple moments where it's just been where I've given myself the chills, like, holy shit, how did I not see this before? Like, like I was just scraping it a little bit and I probably felt it myself at the time, but I don't know if I had the tools to really get people's hackles up, but now coming back to it and it feels right. And, and I'm about a hundred pages in and it's getting me back into the universe. It's getting me psyched to write the follow-up, but it's also just, I, it feels so good and so right to, to, to come back to the original. It's weird. It's a weird thing. It's weird. I, I can't, That's cool. it's weird. <laughs> but so, it's so Mike, you've, so you've been a part of the readings that, that I, I did for, um, I did for the, the, the curses of the red death, right? I, I have and, been. And I, and I fancy myself, I fancy myself, a, a sci-fi fan, you know, fantasy writer for, for both. Um, but I found in writing that story, I was like, damn, I feel like I could be a really good horror writer. Like, I felt I felt that that story was was diving deep into the that is so fucking gross, but not gross like not gross as in like boogers gross, gross as in like horror <laughs> gross. I mean, right. what what did you think, Mike? Do you think I was hitting those those notes? Uh, yes. Um, I think that <clears throat> I think you did. Um, I see. I'm not a writer, so occasionally I'll just be driving down the street, right, and I get this like really bizarre, weird. What, what would seem like a um, a cool idea for to write a horror thing, right? Like it's just just like an idea, like a scene, like something you'd see in a movie, right? Like and 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 sometimes I think nowadays it would translate better in a book. So I'm offering this to somebody, right? Like somebody's <laughs> head. I'll fight you for a motherfucker. <laughs> some, somebody's head. Imagine like a, a guy's head gets cleaved off like halfway, right? right? And the part of his brain that can still see and process what he's seeing is seeing his head flip around right but his ear is not i know his his balance is not getting that so the last thing he sees and can't help but think is why why do i feel like i'm spinning but i'm not you know what i mean like and and as you yeah. just fade into nothing so i i don't know like is that is that the type of uh horror -y stuff that <laughs> sure. is supposed to be written it's about i think that's the thing what who says what is supposed to be written right uh well i'm not a writer so somebody can please write so, that so mike that this is what i would do with that scene that would happen and he would describe it as such he's like right. I, I can't understand i feel like i'm spinning but is right. that me is this me what right and then and then the next sentence would be and that was the final thought that peter would ever have right no not Something peter like that, yeah. no <laughs> we don't want that to happen to you we don't want that to happen to you i'm not we're ready for like, you to go buddy we're like holy shit I didn't realize I had so many gray hairs. Fuck, I'm really dizzy. Yeah. <laughs> What's so wet on my face? Right. Yeah. Like, Lights out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Fade to black. It's terrible. Fade to Is black. That... Where's the half of my? Where's the other half of my head? <laughs> <laughs> but but it's like the science of it because you know there's that whole balance part and there's the whole like you still is is you know the I guess you're kind of questioning it is somewhat still possible to see once a part of the brain and a center oh, yeah. organ has been severed from it. So but it, and then you have the whole phantom limb thing too. Yeah. You, know, you have feeling things that are not attached to you anymore. And 
a fairly yeah, I, recent separation, so you're probably still kind of tied <laughs> up with that part of your Recently separated. <laughs> but, but Mike, I think that's where the horror element lies in that you, you've, what you've done is you've just took this horrific element, you know, somebody's head being chopped off, right? Part of it being chopped off. Right. But you've personalized it, right? It's You've turned it into what that person would be thinking. You've turned it into like a real thought, not like mm-hmm. something like crazy or wild or anything. It's just like somebody questioning like, you know, what the hell am I seeing? You know, and people can imagine that, you know, so it brings it brings it home in a very personal way. And that's like like you're saying, Phil, that's where the hair stand up on your neck. Yeah, where that's it's like, oh, fuck, yeah. that could be me. This is not like crazy. This is real. And I think that's the distinction. I mean, that's I think that's what makes good horror so good is it, it it brings in that sort of that personal element where you're experiencing it and you can and you can imagine being in that situation and and i think that's for me that's what i look for in, in a good horror experience i want to be for better or for worse you know i want to be feeling whatever the the protagonist is feeling i want to i want to feel like you know thrown up in my shoes because i'm so friggin' scared yeah right but and then what I love, what I love slash can't stand is when I really get endeared to a character. But if their death was meaningful, if at the end of the the story or somewhere in the story, I realized they really had to go. Uh, and you know, like I'll give an example, like in you know in the uh, Sigler verse when uh, Perry Doss was a Perry. Spoiler Dawson. alert! Spoiler alert! Oh come, oh, come on, on. Yeah, it's way, way too past spoiler time. With, with, with Perry, was it Perry? Right? Yeah. Yeah. When when he when when he died, it was like the worst loss. <laughs> oh, it was but, terrible. But it, right, but it was like yeah, after the second third in, into the further books, it's like well, that had to happen. Yeah, that yeah, sure. I, that needed. To, yeah, yeah. Still Absolutely. hard to accept sometimes though. Sometimes yeah. that that death of the beloved character is it's hard to stomach. Yeah, and I'm, I'm guilty of it. Yeah, but yeah. it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> oh, that's what makes a good writer. If if you can get your readers to appreciate a, a character that you. Uh, demised then uh, yeah, you, you did know, something right you're making them feel like and, yeah. and like so so when i watch something or read something and like i'm like i come away with like with a gut like like it like it gets me right in the guts you know sometimes i don't like it like i'm like oh i didn't want that yeah. thing person whatever to die but at the same time kind of like but god damn it's good writing because i felt that shit oh yeah i felt it i, yeah. felt, it. I felt something for something I watched that someone else created that's not even fucking real, and I felt it. There you go. That's the thing. You're feeling real emotions that are birthed from these made-up things. Isn't that a... I mean, that's, I mean, that's virtual reality right there. I mean, yeah. I mentioned the trance earlier, but it doesn't get more virtual reality than that when you're actually... Your body is having actual emotional and physical reactions to things that are, you know, written down on, a, on on the page that that came out of someone else's imagination that aren't even real, but they it feels so real, and and uh, and I think that's, I think that level of it is is reasonably rare. I mean, there's a lot of great authors out there, but I think we can all probably, you know, maybe count on our hands and feet if we're lucky the number of times where that reaction has been yeah. so visceral, and it's yeah. sometimes it's 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 uncomfortable and 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 sad and but it's still very you know exciting have you so, ever shocked yourself phil with uh uh killing someone and going oh man so I'd... two stories about shocking myself uh <laughs> first story uh take it to take it literally i was in the seventh grade uh in mrs Shear's biology class and i don't know if you remember those old school lab tables they used to have in classrooms and they have like the the gas line for the bunsen burner yeah. and they have the outlet mm-hmm. someone had jammed a paper clip into the outlet and uh my buddy brian my best friend since the fifth grade he actually texted me uh tonight we chat regularly still still close uh there's a paper clip as i said sticking out of the outlet and i, I said I'm, I'm gonna touch it i think it's fine and he's he just kind of shakes his head which to this day he still does i can feel him shaking his head at me through text messages and i gave it a tap and it's fine. I'm like, oh, they must have turned the outlet off. I'm going to pull it out. And so I grab it. And when I grab it, I must have completed the circuit somehow. Because I got the biggest shock of my life. I went, boom. <laughs> yeah. uh, as far as shocking myself with uh, in, in in a writing sense, there's definitely been. More that is what I meant. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. For the writing. For the writing. Yeah. There there have been more than a few times. And even sometimes when I I know it's coming and I know I know this is where the story is going. 
there have been some times, and I feel like this is even in the last several years with some things I've written. And I feel like the things I'm writing now at this stage of my life have been a lot more personal in, in a lot of ways. And, and I feel like some of those things hit me very hard. Yeah. Hit me very yeah, I hard. Think, I think I was, I was listening to one of your episodes and I can't remember which one it was, but you were talking on the podcast and you were talking, you know, before the episode and you were saying that you were writing it and it was late at night and you actually had to stop writing because you were freaking yourself out. Oh yeah. That was, um, I think that was the January, uh, Patreon story neighbors, which is a, uh, is a story of, you know, demonic kind of possession in suburbia, I guess you would say, but not from the oh, yeah. perspective of the um, people that are directly experiencing this demonic possession situation, as we'll describe it, but rather the fucking neighbors of these people. Because we're all often thrust directly in the middle of the situation, but imagine what, what would it be like on the periphery of it, and that's kind of the basis of this story. And Honest, honest to God, I I couldn't work on this story at night. I worked on it at one night and I wasn't even all the way in the basement thinking back to it. I was just in the kitchen and I had to stop because I was just getting too, too freaked out. It even freaked me out during the day, but no way I could work on it at night. Couldn't do the edits at night, which kind of made the production schedule a little wacky because I had to figure out times of day where, you know, I was working from home and the dogs in the neighborhood weren't barking and I had thoroughly walked my dog so I could like go come downstairs and record the narration. And I still got the chills with the sun up and I'm, I'm reading this shit and it was just bonkers. Yeah. Wow. I was, yeah, I was like, I was like, why is he freaking himself out? <laughs> so, so let's party. So let, let, let's, let's talk about that real quick. So you, you know, you wrote right now for your Patreon stream. Tell people about your Patreon stream. Why, you know, if, if, if I'm a, if, if one of, I'm one of your patrons or one of your patrons, patron, I'm one of your patrons. Patreon is a site. So if I'm one of right. your patrons, yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what are we getting? Uh, cause I know what I, I know what we're getting. Why don't you tell us what we're getting? When you're, we, get, we're at you're getting the goods. You're getting the goods. Um, so obviously you, you're going to get the, the monthly story or episode of whatever novels going on. Sometimes it happens twice a month. Uh, you get extras, uh, and things that, uh, relate to the story universe. It could be artwork. It could be little side blip stories, some extra audio photographs. Uh, I like to do articles you know, I like to kind of do some side research about what I'm writing about. And then I'll, I'll share some of the stuff that I've dug up. Uh, more recently in 2019, there's a Patreon exclusive discord community, uh, music. Uh, there's, there's a lot going on. And, and, and I also, I just feel like the, the personal touch I feel hopefully is what kind of ties it all together too. Um, I've told, I've been told, um, by some of my, um, patrons, uh, who are also, you know, familiar with the Patreon model and, and, and apparently I, I give good value. I don't know. I, I just give what I give. Uh, but um, if you like good value, uh, check it out. But um, I do love Patreon deeply because I think I talked to you guys. I think did we last do our first Mythwitch interview when I was first embarking on the Patreon journey. Does yes. that sound right? Yeah, that's and yeah, it was like, did we talk last year once? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. Was it last year? Or was two it 20 years ago? I, it was two, two years, years. two yeah. years ago. And I think I was talking about being hopeful about Patreon and the things I wanted to do. And here it is two years later, 2019, almost you know, two years and about a, a month uh, to my first Patreon story, which was the Clown Motel. And I had these aspirations of what I wanted to do. I wanted to, um, you know, there are a couple series I wanted to write. I wanted to podcast the Eden sequel. I wanted, there was, I hope there's so much I wanted to do and I've done it. And it's, still feels like just the beginning. And so I am in love with Patreon and I'm in love with the people that have supported me there. It's just been what I've, what I needed to get back to the writing. And, and, and by that extension, because of my deep, deep appreciation for what it's returned to my life, which has been the writing, which was so sorely missing. Um, I, I think that's why I give it so much and put so much into it, whether I had 10 people subscribing or where we are now, we're, we're a little over a hundred. Um, but I mean, that's, I've got to work my hardest because people are, you know, sacrificing, even if it's just a few bucks. Mm -hmm. I mean, a few bucks a month is 
a few bucks. I mean, every yeah, every know. penny counts. I mean, I can absolutely. I mean, I every I I count pennies daily. You know, so it's 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 a sacrifice, and you know, hey, I'm going to give everyone my every my all. <laughs> Mike and I have have talked about doing a Patreon for for this show, right? Mm -hmm. But but you got to be prepared to give people like to do something with it. You got you got to be active in in the Patreon yeah. community. Yeah. You got to make it work. There's a yeah. it's a model. So Mike yeah. and I have talked about it, but we're not in a position to do that yet. You know, we're just not, we're not there where we can, um, where we can provide any kind of anything more than what we're doing right now. It's right. We'll still take blank checks. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, it, it's coming to a think? point where, where we could do that because, um, as Mike's transitioning into taking more of a responsibility on this show, he's he, his life has been full of a lot of stuff up until recently, and in the past year or two, he's freed up a lot of stuff and streamlined his life a little better. Would you say that's fair, Mike? Would you say that's a fair assessment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so he's <laughs> he's more able to support this show, so he does a lot more for this show than he used to do, which is awesome. It's helping me out a lot because uh, I do a lot of creative stuff and a lot of the stuff that I do. I have, I have tons of shit on my hard drive. Yeah. I mean, so much shit on my hard drive that I've half created that mm -hmm. I could like do shit yeah. with and I could yeah. put into a Patreon and people would really enjoy, but you can't give people something that's 90% done. It's got, it's, it's got to be done. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I mean, <laughs> trust me, I've got gigs of things that are yeah. like 80% done, but uh, yeah. may never see the, may never yeah, see sure. the light. And that's every, Let's, that's every creative. Like that. yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, absolutely. That's the truth. And that's the thing too, you know, it's um, what I will say and and you know you guys know that i i work hard putting stuff out i still and i said if i start feeling anxiety from patreon um because another thing that i think creatives can understand is is that anxiety uh then i'll re-examine things um uh, i've been i've been up against the wall you know i've been i've been behind that eight ball and i've, I've wondered how i'm gonna meet these deadlines uh but it still hasn't been that sort of feeling of dread where you are shut down by that kind of that feeling, right? It's more of been like, all right, I gotta, I gotta focus, I gotta get this shit done, and so I feel like I'm still in a good place with it. But I gotta make sure that I am delivering. And people are, <laughs> you know, my 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 pledges are so forgiving, right? They would probably say take a couple months off and, and, and just get your, you know, get things together and do what you have to do. Yeah. But they also know that I will, even if they, a whole hundred of them said that to me, I'd be like, fuck you guys. I'm not going to do that shit. <laughs> I got to tell you, you know, I got to tell you from, from doing the NaNoWriMo thing, um, it, it made it, it made me see it like I do my job. So my job mm -hmm. has deadlines. Every project mm -hmm. I do has these crazy. Yep. So, I, uh, you know, so I'm a project manager and I think I saw, I, I think I just happened to catch in passing when I was doing research for this, uh, that you're a project manager too. So you would, I this. am by day, by yeah. day when I, yeah, that's my, I hide my right, hair and my collar and uh, brothers in arms. Yeah. Right. That, that's my by day. I'm a, I'm a, a project yeah, manager for the day. army. And you just, there's schedules, you know, there's things, deadlines, right. Mm -hmm. And these, and these, if you don't have them, we'll, we'll fill, uh, I'm sorry to one of the guys I work with, we'll fill whatever time you give us with other shit, you know, oh, or yeah. with more shit or the same Without shit. Without a doubt. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, if I have two weeks to get something done, I'll get it done in two weeks. If you give me a month, I'll get the same fucking thing done in two weeks. It yeah. may have, or four weeks, sorry. It may <laughs> exactly, have. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I'll put more shit into it. It'll be better. Yeah. yeah. But That's I'll thing, fill too. that month. You know, here's fill? The I had this you say, for lack minute, hold of a on, word. Where, Mike, hold on, Mike. What was that? Wait, hold on, hold on. Phil? Hey, Phil? Sorry. <laughs> Groundhog Day. Very nice. Just, you, have, you have to understand, Phil. Just among Pete and I, we have a meme with you that whenever we have you on or we talk about you, it's like, Phil? Phil? Rossi? Phil? Phil? <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that I'm a Groundhog Day meme. Yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah there you go. I, I, and I tell people this, and I don't know if people take me at my word. But most days, most of my days, and and this might not be healthy. Most of my days are are literally budgeted down to like the minute. I'm like, all right, so if I finish this by eight forty two, that gives me eight minutes to walk the dogs, and I get back, and I've got ten minutes. I can review these three clips from Twitch. That'll get me to nine o'clock. I'll start working. I'm gonna work until 
you know, 1130, I'm going to walk the dogs and I'm going to go downstairs. I'm going to plug in my mic and my webcam and turn on the PlayStation. I'm going to go back up, send two emails out. Noon hits. I'm going to do my lunch hour live stream on Twitch. One o'clock, you know, back on it. I'm going to work until 330. And then, you know, I don't have a call at 330. So I'm going to cram in a 30 minute workout. Four o'clock, I'm going to hop on a call, work till five. Then I'm going to spend, you know, an hour editing until, you know, six. And I'm going to you know, put it in the Chipotle order. I'm going to go pick that up. It'll be back by, you know, 6, 12. We're going to eat and we're going to watch two shows that are 24 minutes long. That'll bring me to seven o'clock. Then we go back downstairs. We're going to record. I mean, it, it's ridiculous, but that's, I mean, that's how most of my weeks go. I don't think that's healthy, but I get married anymore. But I get you done. I am though. I remarried you, almost remarried? four years ago now. Yeah, how does, how do you be, how are you married? And that works. Cause usually I go, I'm going to do this, this, and this, and this. And then the, the wife torpedo comes in and boom, blows that schedule to hell. That's the thing. You got to plan for the wife torpedo. That's why. <laughs> yeah. I didn't once, hear wife torpedo in there anywhere. Once you hit, <laughs> once you hit seven o'clock, yeah. Then it might be like, and then we're going to watch, you know, this is us. And then I'm going to rub some feet. And then I planned on, rub some feet and then I planned on doing, <laughs> but I planned on doing edits at nine o'clock and, and now it's 11 o'clock, but it's nine o'clock. A couple time zones behind me. <laughs> oh my God. All right. Don, All right, okay. save me. So listen, listen, hey, we got, uh, got and, and, and before... Daniel L. Jackson, I'm the foot fucking master. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So we, we put a question, we put the question down in the chat room. Uh, we asked, you know, if anyone had any questions for you. So, Don Booth has asked. He said uh, he'd like to know that uh, when you write something like hey, the trance, <laughs> when okay. you write something like the trance, um, do you do that? Like, do you write the whole thing and then serialize it, or do you write and serialize as you go? From so the trance is was kind of an interesting experience. So the trance, uh, I wrote, um, I think the tail end of 2017, early 2018. I think I wrote the first draft. 90% uh, of the trance was written on my commute to and from work, fully dictated uh, from my Bluetooth earpiece into Scrivener on my iPhone, right? So, um, and the goal was, you know, it was serialized in that sense that I knew I had 12, it was going to be a 12 episode uh, journey. I didn't know it was going to turn into a, a full novel. I just thought it was going to be 12 episode series. So it was kind of serialized already from that standpoint. And as it happens, once I kind of started doing the rewrites, I was kind of panicked because it just became a monster almost instantaneously. And I had budgeted a certain amount of time to work on this because I was going to work on some other things at the same time. And then it became an oh fuck situation. Well, I guess I'm all in on this and I'll try to figure out how to fit other stuff in. So I had hoped to even have, in terms of serialization, five episodes in the can to give me, you know, a buffer to work on the rest of it kind of as it went on. But I think I got maybe two episodes in the can and then it became sort of a, you know, I was rewriting and then podcasting and producing all within the same couple of weeks that an episode came out and that was bonkers. And it almost killed, it almost killed me. Let me get this straight. <laughs> Did I just hear you say that you were dictating a book? Yes. Yes. Oh my God. There's yeah. hope for me. Like I might be able to do that. Is that what you're saying? Like, absolutely. It possible? It can, it, it's possible. I, I'll, I'll tell you. Um, so one of my, my favorite authors, Kevin J. Anderson, um, I was yeah, in love with his, uh, the saga of the seven sons series yep, yep. Is, is one of my favorite kind of space operas. Uh, he will, he dictates his books. He goes hiking and he dictates them, but then, you know, he hands off those files to a transcriptionist and they transcribe. Uh, don't have that in the budget as of yet. And I don't think I would even probably do that because I would probably make someone go insane. Yeah. Ooh, story idea. Holy shit. Author dictates book transcriptionist. Some weird shit happens. Don't you motherfucker steal that. Oh, no, no, it's all you. Oh, yeah, he, he's, <laughs> he is dictating some kind of Cthulhu type yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. And oh. if the transcriptionist is writing it, they start seeing shit. Shit starts going on. Dude, that's a book, that's, man. You got to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. That's happen. Back to, back, Liz, I'm going to take a left turn and get back on the highway. Okay. Um, and so that's how I kind of came upon this idea of dictating your writing. And, and, oh. I gave it a few tries and kind of gave up on it. And then I was, he was talking about it at one point on his Facebook and I made a comment 
and then he said the, the most insightful thing ever. He said, well, you probably weren't that great at typing when you first started and there was a disconnect between your brain and, and typing out the words on the page. And I said, holy shit, he's got a good point. And he just said, you got to practice. And so I practiced and practiced and practiced. And now I kind of feel like I'm at this point now where when I do it, it feels a lot more, a lot more natural. The yeah. trance uh, was kind of, I think, kind of getting to that, that stage where it was boom, epiphany. Now let's put it this way. You might have some weird things pop up in the, uh, in the transcript because, you know, Bluetooth sure. technology and speech to text is not totally perfect, but let's put it this way. It, most of the stuff has made a lot more sense than when I'm sitting there at, you know, one in the morning and I'm falling asleep and writing, I have written some weird, weird yeah. things like in that sort of. You're not the first thing. person that I've heard yeah. that from. <laughs> when I was doing NaNoWriMo, you know, and you had to finish so many words per day, to, you had to meet this 50,000 words in 30 oh. days goal. Oh yeah. Um, I've gone back to that and I'm just been like, there's, there's been a couple sentences where I'm like, I'm just going to erase that sentence. Cause I don't know what the fuck. I got I trying to say at one point I knew what that meant, but at this point, no clue. All right. Another, another question from the chat room. Uh, Mama Marsh. That's my mommy. Uh, uh, she was actually wondering uh, if you would do any transition from horror to just psychological thriller. She's not. I mean, and I don't know. I it's, it's hard to say what some person, but one person would consider literary horror versus what is a psychological thriller anyway but because as we know most of most of my horror is psychological but then there's that kind of supernatural paranormal kind of bent to it but however good question um i do have a novel on the shelf uh waiting awaiting rewrites that is 100 percent psychological thriller entitled zero uh that will probably see the airwaves maybe a year from now so it was kind of a departure from what I normally do, but I, I wanted to write something that was just a hundred percent, you know, the horror of, of humanity. And so let's no not magic. forget, <laughs> let's not forget your, uh, on the shelf, psychological thriller trance scribe. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes. Right, right. Well, we'll see that might, that might become more than, more than just psychological, but we'll, uh -oh. we'll, so we'll Mike, see. So, so Tori had Tori Duke pod. Oh, Hey Tori. She has a couple We're, questions. She yes, says, what, like what would you say your scariest story is? Ooh, my scariest story. Okay, so I can see that kind of go in two different ways. Uh, the neighbors most recently scared the shit out of me. I was raised Catholic, so the whole like demonic possession, devil business kind of freaks me out. Um, and then I, for lack of um, spoilers, if you all haven't heard my story, Mirror, Mirror, um, which is basically about a soldier trying to get back home to his family. Yeah. Uh, that was yes. one of the more scary stories in a, in a, in a very different sense um, without giving any spoilers, right? But uh, that was kind of facing the fear of kind of loss and the fear of finding your way uh, and, and that question of what if, you know, what if I can't find my way? And, and so that was, that raised a lot of sort of deep emotions for me that were kind of scary to face. And, and I feel like that story kind of raises some scary concepts. And also, I just feel like I want to point out and say, because Tori had asked this earlier, and I had posted a couple of your links in the chat, but she had asked, where can she go to find some of your materials? And what if I can't find my way? Sorry, and... sorry. My bad. Sorry. <laughs> And um, also, uh, you can go and uh, download. He's um, Phil does the very freemium type of um, um, dissemination, you know, free dissemination of your work too, right? Yes. So, yeah. so you can um, like if you just go and look because you have a couple of different feeds. But yeah. if you go to his latest one, is just if you go with Phil Rossi Media Podcasts. Uh, yes yes mm -hmm. and uh mm -hmm. it'll it'll be the most recent ones published and he's got like the most march um 2019 is the story sunlight that is correct yes so, there, is, there is free yes. there are freebies out there you don't have to buy me a cup of coffee a month i will give you stories as right. long as you give me a smile <laughs> there's a smile there's a smile i just got two yeah nice nice <laughs>
<laughs> All right, so hey, let, let's do some business before we uh, before we wind up running out of time, right? We yeah. want to make sure oh, we yeah. hit some of these things. So, Peter Bryant just joined the, uh, the chat too. So it's a business right. time. So, um, so so Phil, you got uh, the trance has been going. Is, is the trance finished? Because I'm trance I'm getting into it. Yes, trance okay. finished. Uh, Jan ooh, December thirty first. I. I okay. don't quote me on that. I tried to drop the last episode of the trance on, on I'm, I'm a little, the reason why I asked is I'm a little behind. I, I had some audio books that have been building up in audible and I wanted to get through them. And I, so yeah. I took a break from podcasts for a while and I've been listening to audio books and I've just now getting back into the, the I get podcast. That. I get that. Um, I get that. <laughs> so, so it was, um, I, I started diving deep into the trance and I love it. And Mike is, Mike is a big cyberpunk fan. And I, mm -hmm. told him, I was like, dude, you got, you got to be listening to the trance because it is totally cyberpunk. Yeah. So I have it. I got them all pulled up now, too. So I'm Oh, ready. good, good. I'm so that, that started off as a total experiment. That was a flash fiction experiment uh, in late 2017. I, I don't don't write these dates down and then email me later while you were wrong. Uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> writing the wiki as we speak. Get it right. Yeah. Man. That's right. Because it's community owned. So someone can correct for us. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It was an experiment. I, it was it, the, I just like the concept of, well, what if you get this, you know, this undead van, you know, vampire and, and they want to get, you know, immersed in this virtual world. And then, then I was thinking crime and it just, I said, well, let me give it three, you know, 500 to 1,000 word kind of episode arc and, and see what kind of happens for my Flash Fiction Fridays. And I just kind of like the idea a lot. You know? and, and, I, and I had been thinking about doing a, vi a vampire thing for a while. And it was just, a, again, that confluence that I was uh, talking about earlier. And uh, I had a lot of fun with it. I had a lot of fun writing it. It did almost honestly kill me uh, because not only did I do the, you know, the story and the podcast, but... I went in all all in on the production for you know those of you out there listening that are Crescent fans, production uh, level was very similar to Crescent. So there's you know, kind of sound design, there's music. I paid for the royalty or for the uh, for the publishing rights to be able to cover a couple popular songs. Um, so I went all in, and it almost it honestly almost killed me, but I made it I made it through to drop in that last episode, but man, what a fun journey. And the thing with the trance too, is that, uh, that it doesn't just end with the trance season one. So I have jotted down other, you know, there are, there's volume two or season two, volume three, season three shit's just getting started. So, oh, okay. So you got a story yeah. Bible come building. It is on, awesome. it is on, cool. it is on nice. yeah. the compendium will look great on your coffee tables. Sweet. Nice. <laughs> and so you're, you're doing Eden too. Eden 2 uh, will be dropping in April. Uh, I was planning early April, but I've had some production delays. Uh, mostly my pug, Hopper, has gotten, is going through this weird separation thing, and I cannot seem to find a quiet time to kind of get away and continue working on the, uh, the narration. He gets very, <laughs> very upset when I leave the room. He's being really good tonight, so I think he's getting over the hump. But he'll just sit at the top of the basement stairs and just weep the uh, the saddest little dog tears that you've ever heard. And I can have him down here with me, and he's kind of good when he's down here. But because he's a pug and he's got this smushed in face, you just hear him breathing. I'm like, okay, that kind of kills the atmosphere. It's <laughs> I'm not writing a cute book here, but I am I'm about uh, two hours into the narration of of the Eden Suite sequel, and I'm very very pumped to uh to share this uh to share the story and again it was another just very emotional kind of writing experience for me and i hope that the fans of the original book uh are really going to enjoy it and i mentioned this um maybe last month when i was uh, chatting with my discord community uh so eden is is the follow-up to or eden eternity is the follow-up to eden uh but it is actually going to say four as it was intended when i first wrote it before my life kind of took a left turn uh, it was intended to be a four-volume series. Okay. So this is number two, and then there will be a number three and a number four, and then eventually I will combine them as the Eden Omnibus and maybe publish it as a you know a full full book. But um, yeah, this is uh, the second second uh, leg of the journey, and uh, it's different. I'll say this: it's different than than uh, the first book. Uh, same same 
sort of uh, mysterious spacey vibe. As, as I, I have a hard time kind of quantifying even the first book because it's I feel like it's kind of reasonably different than most other things out there. Yeah. So I, I felt I felt that Eden. So I felt that Eden was sort of. Um, Sort of like a, a blend of things, and and I'm gonna say, and tell, correct me if, if 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 you feel I, you, you disagree, but I felt there was elements of Solaris in that. Um, yeah. Okay. There I was, see that. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, yeah, what absolutely. was that movie? What was that movie with um, Hugh Jackman? He did that with the tree. The um, I don't know. Uh, when I saw that. Oh crap! It's it's the one where he journeys. The greatest time. showman. What's that? No, no, Great no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Damn no, it! I was gonna troll him with. You know, I, I can't think of it. But anyway, movie, so he's say. he's like Ponce de Leon, and he goes and he finds this tree, and uh, and then but then he's a doctor. I don't know that. I, I don't know that I saw that. Oh, I can't remember the name of the damn movie. But anyway, so the he's, navigator. Like no, no, it's just a, wait, so anyway, Logan so, was that Logan? <laughs> no, no. So anyway, it's very trippy. <laughs> Avatar, like, very, like, tree. Very, um, uh, a, a, a trippy and very, very like introspective and and very like thought provoking yeah. kind of in, I don't know psychological kind of book. I, yeah. I felt. Yeah, awesome. I will when you figure out what that movie is, and I'll, I'll want to check it out. But that, I think that kind of sums it up. I felt like there's certainly an Arthur C. Clarke kind of vibe to it. Um, the thing with uh, you know writing Eden, we kind of talked about being in a universe and then having to you know take a hike for a while with Eden. That was the thing, you know, I, I had this vision for it and I had to take a hike for almost 10 years, but I found that I kind of hit the ground running almost with it. And it's just, uh, it's a, it's a, to me, it's kind of a very magical universe. Uh, the there's fountain. a, yeah, yeah. And the, yeah, there's a, the fountain. Okay. I've heard of that. The okay. Fountain. I've heard of that. Okay, yeah, sorry. Um, there is a, I'll say this much about Eden eternity. There's a, there's a real dark side to this one. Okay. All right, there's a real dark side to it. Um, I can't imagine. And I'm so yeah, I'm so exposed because if you read the first one, there's some darkness to it. But I I would say if you compare Eden Eternity to say Crescent, you would say okay, Eden's not that dark by compare, right? Right. Maybe, maybe not, maybe not. I mean, it's subjective, and and but um, it's darker in a way that's when I think of Crescent, I th Crescent's darkness, I think of like rust. And smoke, you know, and 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 blood and drawing blood and 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 screams. When I think of Eden Eternity, you know, I think of 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 shadows and fog and 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 whispers and and I'll just leave it at that. And if that's okay. not an enticing way to describe it, I don't know what the hell is. I like it. I like it. I, that just came out. This just came out of me right now. This came out. Of All me. right. So uh, we I we got to ask you about Twitch, but real quick uh, oh, because yeah. somebody must is is fangirling over your uh, your velvety pipes. So do you do any uh, do you do any voice work? Have you have you thought about getting into anything else uh, Man. With, with voice acting or? So other than what I do for my books, um, I am very proud to be a cast member of Edict Zero. Uh, the it's a sci-fi audio drama. If you haven't checked it out, it is brilliant. Uh, Jack Kincaid, who's the uh, author slash producer, is just such an awesome creative mind. Uh, it's really neat, and I recommend you check that out. Uh, so I do voice work for that, and then beyond that, I don't. That's not. The, but the, the the desire is there, and I was actually just talking to my kids about that the other day. I think we were watching. Um, uh, the Legend of Korra, we just started watching mm -hmm. together as a family. And cool. And they, they know I do podcasting, and they know that I narrate my books, and they know that I do some audio drama stuff. And, and they asked me, they're like, Daddy, like, why don't you do this? That would be so cool if you were the voice in one of these shows, and my youngest daughter's really in anime. And and I said, I don't know. I, I would love to do that. I just have, have no idea how to even mm -hmm. begin. I have no idea. I don't even know where I would start. Yeah, but, uh, if we lived in you know, Texas, you could work for Funimation. But uh, you, know. <laughs> but, and you know, a lot of these guys they do it remotely too. They do it in their home yeah, studios yeah. and they submit it. But uh, man, wouldn't that be fun? I would love to do that. So who knows? Maybe someday. Maybe someday. Yeah. Yeah. People tell me I have a voice for silent radio, so, <laughs> so, silent television. So, or... hey, hey, Phil, are you going to Balticon this year? You think? Uh, so uh, I'm actually going to be away that weekend. Oh. I'm actually there's a, a, a small family reunion. 
taking place, so I will not be around. I say, Bob not Baltic. cool, I'm dude. Doing, I'm doing a live reading of a short story that I'm going to write just for Balticon. So say, hey, I I'll, could lend I'll, your voice to I'll, I'll FaceTime in. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right, fine. All right, so let, let's talk about you before, because we got we got a game, and then we got to get out of here. Twitch stream. Tell me about your Twitch stream. Oh, Twitch, 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 Twitch. So I will say this at the top of this discussion, and he knows it, but I'm going to say it anyway. I'm going to call him out because I don't think he'll get a giggle out of that. I blame you, T. Morris. I blame you for <laughs> He should. So I was, well, I've, I've, back in, this was the fall, maybe it was still the summer, I knew that, you know, T was Twitch streaming, and I checked it out a few times. I said, oh, that looks fun. And um, I think, well, I had something coming up. I think I was just doing this as a general promotion. I said, okay, month of October, I'm going to Twitch stream some horror games just to promote my Patreon. Excuse me. And so I start Twitch streaming. I had no setup whatsoever. I was going right out of the PS4. I think I started with a little alien isolation. And you know, I had a few people come by and it was fun. And I said, oh, this is kind of cool and kind of different. I was talking about my stories while I was playing these video games. And so then I said, well, why don't I uh why don't I kind of step it up a little bit? And I own a PlayStation VR that was gathering dust. And I said, Oh. Look at this! They've uh, put out the this Exorcist series of games for the for the for the VR, and I said, well, "Wouldn't it be a trip for me to to stream this live and have people kind of have the shit scared out of them alongside me?" And so after that, it just kind of it just snowballed from that. I, it was a blast. People were into it. I was talking about the game, but I was also talking about stories and kind of horror in general. And so here we are now, you know, it's March of 2019 and, you know, I got affiliated, I think in October um, and I just have fallen in complete love with it. And my stream is pretty much dedicated to playing horror titles. Uh, we've got such an awesome community. It spawned the, the Discord community originally, but, uh, you know, I stream a couple nights a week, a couple days, you know, I do a couple lunch hour streams, not, you know, I don't do six hour streams because I don't have time to do that, but um it's just been absolutely you got feet to rub. Yeah, I got I got I got feet to rub. That's right. You know, it can't be the foot fucking master if you're not rubbing feet. All right. <laughs> Quote me on that shit. And how many uh, so how many people do you have do you have watch your stream? Like how what's, what's your community like? Yeah, it's not a, it's not a huge number. I mean, I think uh, you know, my at my highest, maybe ten or twelve. I've had in the twenties a couple times. Um but the people that do, it's such a good close knit yeah. group. And and I, cool. I really am hoping to grow it too. But even if I never do grow it, you know, I'm making a few bones, you know, I'm making a few bones here to help kind of pay for other stuff. Uh, really? Nice. And so I, I can just, that helps me kind of justify keeping it going. And then I have actually gained several new, you know, every month I get a couple new Patreon pledges out of doing Twitch. Uh, so it's, and then just emotionally for me, it's been so just cathartic just to sit down and get to play some games again. And, and people get a kick out of it. I do on Thursdays. I do what I call it's called VR Thursdays, and um, you know I play like the Exorcist VR right now. I'm playing a Thai horror inspired game called Home Sweet Home, and uh, people kind of join me for that, and they kind of see what I'm seeing. But then my Twitch subscribers get an exclusive uh, video on demand of me, and they see me in the headset. They see the game being played, and they see the actual outlandish friggin' reactions that I make, and it's ridiculous. <laughs> and then I do a companion podcast called The Scream Stream Podcast, where I talk a little bit about the games, but then I also share some scary stories. So right now, since we're doing a, a Thai-inspired horror story, the last few Scream Stream podcasts have been about Thai horror, and I've shared some specific Thai ghost stories. So it's been it's been really neat. It's been really cool. Neat. Oh, very cool. Very hey, you cool. think people want to watch us argue and troll each other while we play games, Pete? I, they might. I don't know. They just might. They may. <laughs> uh, come on, man. Yeah. People just get entertained when we just you like, know what? Troll we'll, we'll play like the old Laser Shoot Larry games. Like, oh, like, like, <laughs> there you go. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> oh, but you know what? Half of the fun is just yeah. us arguing about what we're going to stream yeah. and play. No, right. no, cl yeah, click on her blouse. Click on her blouse. <laughs> you know, I gotta, it's funny because I was thinking about people who stream nowadays, like the kids that stream nowadays. Not just kids, but, you know, people who stream nowadays. And I think back to when I used to play uh, when I used to play video games and I was really good at some of them. So there was, there was a few like tribes and I was really, really good at the early Doom stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking, you know, if this if this had happened, like all the streaming stuff had happened back then, 
you know, there's a chance I'd be one of these streamers who like, you know, people follow and shit because I used to be really good at this stuff. But I haven't nah, I really get to play video games anymore. So I'm like so out of touch. I get on a video game now, I get on a controller and I'm like, uh, okay, hit the bu- Oh, fuck, I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing too. I mean, for me, I've always loved video games ever since I owned a you know, Commodore 64. I've got a C64 mini sitting on my shelf. Um, but I could never justify it because to me, I felt like it was just being way too selfish to set aside an hour to play a video game when I had an hour's worth of at least of manuscript that I was supposed to edit that night. But right. now doing the Twitch thing, it's become a, v- a very community based thing too. Uh, and you know, people aren't necessarily looking for like the greatest gamer out there. They just want someone that's, you know, gregarious, that can watch. talk, that can chat, that they're fun to watch. You know, I play that's one true. of the games I do on my lunch hour live stream, Dead by Daylight. I'm not the greatest at that game. I die a lot more than I live. And as a killer, I let more people escape than I do hang on the meat hook. But uh you, know, you keep it fun, you keep it light, and and people like to just they don't care if you're the greatest gamer as long as you're engaging them on some semi meaningful level as far as as far as meaningful as you can get and sweet all right so let's but i love it we gotta get to the game let's so game speaking let, of let's, games let's let's give let's give some links out before we go to the game let's um, link it up make sure you check out phil the best place to check him out is patreon.com forward slash phil rossi p-h-i-l-r-o-s-s-i and if i might phil? interject oh there it is phil oh sorry <laughs> and if i might interject just because you're landing on Patreon, don't think that means that oh you gotta you gotta pay up to be able to get access to content. Because in 2019, I started the the free story series that is accessed directly through Patreon. Mm. So don't be don't be set off. You know, just come by because there that is where that's the gateway. The content. So fantastic, uh, and you can also check out PhilRossiMedia.com. Mm-hmm. Find them on Twitch. At Phil Rossi Media. Pew, 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 pew. Right. And on Twitter at Phil Rossi. And on the Instagram at the real Phil Rossi. Right? Right. Yeah. Uh, is it the real Phil Rossi or is it Phil know. Rossi Media? I don't know because I'm looking at it and uh, it says the real Phil Rossi, but then over on top of that it says Phil Rossi Media. So yeah. I don't know which is which. Uh, Phil Rossi Media would be the URL. Not to steal your thunder. Okay. Yeah, there you go, Mike. Phil so, Rossi Media. Sorry. Yeah. See, Mike. Uh, the real. Well, I don't know. I don't I mean. I'm not too good on the. I'm still learning the Instagram. <laughs> you're still learning the grams. <laughs> still getting used to the grams. Get my grandma. Right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I will correct no, that on like the everybody. Notes. We, you know, I got a game to play. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was yeah. this yeah. year. I was talking to Mike, and I said. I said, Christ, man, Phil is on fucking fire. Like, you took kind of a break. You weren't doing a whole lot of stuff. And I was like, real. I was like, you know, in the last year or two, Phil has been burning out a lot of words, and we had to bring you back on. So, so check out it's Phil. Great, I mean, he's put out Thank stuff so much. constantly, like ridiculous. Like, I don't know how you do it. I guess because you schedule every minute of your day. <laughs> That's <laughs> how. <laughs> so, so definitely, if if you check out Phil, you go to his site. You, you're gonna just, just constant, like every every week, you're getting stuff constantly. So it's very prolific, Phil. Very prolific. Thank you, guys. Hey, you know, uh, thank you for having me back on. Yeah, absolutely. But we'll do it again down the road a little ways and, and see oh. where we are then. Yeah, for absolutely. shizzle. But yeah. but before then, before All right, Mike, then, here we now? go, buddy. It's game time with uh, the Mythwits. I'm Mike Kafis, and I'll be your game master this week. And this week we are going to be playing. Freshest Tomatoes. Ooh, I will give scary. you the names of two actors, and you must tell me which of them has the highest Rotten Tomatoes percentage or fresher tomato rating for their best 10 movies, their top 10 best movies. So just keep in mind that uh, when people vote on Rotten Tomatoes, it's just a thumbs up or a thumbs down, but they take those cumulatively and do a percentage amalgam their grading with their movies now all right do i get a practice round <laughs> uh yes pete peter bryant or mike kafis who has a higher freshest tomato rating i think it's just even right they're the same yeah. Dead I, love, I love you just the same right? 
<laughs> there you go. No. Right, okay. It. So um, it, it's a very, it's honestly, Phil, it's very easy. Uh, I mean, uh, you, you, you seem to know some movies. You're, you're, you're uh, a media uh, darling, so don't, don't you worry about this. <laughs> Okay. All right. So uh, the first one, and, and and let's face it, when it comes to any of this rotten tomato stuff, it's all just fucking guessing. We're yeah, all absolutely. just guessing. Yeah. <laughs> what do the trolls of the internet? Right. Yes. Yes. This Who do they like right. more? Right. So uh, Jonah Hill. Now, who's first? Or Will or Will Ferrell? Uh, let's start with Phil. Oh, who's freshest? Yes. So at all right. So basically, yeah. uh, if you think it back. And just think, because I do this two different ways. So for anyone playing at home, even before we did it, where it was just their le- their last ten movies, but now we're playing for their best ten. So okay. their rankings um, from highest to lowest. So just think of all the movies that Jonah Hill has been in. Right. Think of all the movies that Will Ferrell has been in, and think mm, who has the freshest, the fresherest tomato. Uh, I'll, I gotta say Will Ferrell. You gotta say Will Ferrell. And by saying Will Ferrell, we would first say that Jonah Hill has a 90.9 freshness rating for his really? last 10 movies. Yes. Will Ferrell, <laughs> on the Great other Odin hand, Raven. has an 81.1%. Oh, I was going to say Jonah Hill first. Yeah. Jonah Hill first. So there so you go. I love me some Will Ferrell, but I love me some Jonah Hill. All right. Hey, you know what? That's good. I know something new now. That's all right. Yeah. So this will definitely help you in trivia night at yes. uh, the bar, That's right. right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, all right, Peter. Uh, your two actors are Bradley Cooper Ooh. or Joaquin Phoenix. Ooh. Uh, Joaquin like a, Phoenix. This is like a tough one, too. All right, so I got to ask you something. So w- the Rotten Tomatoes score, is this based upon uh, uh, movie reviewers or people? Just anybody. Uh, the tomatoes are. Is that just anybody, or is that movie reviewers? Because that's two different. I think it's just things. anybody, right? Just anybody. That's my understanding. Okay, all right. Joaquin Phoenix. Hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Who was it? Joaquin Phoenix and who? Joaquin Phoenix or Bradley Cooper? Okay, you know. Bradley, right, right, Bradley Cooper, right. All right. So Bradley Cooper. Fuck. So he did Stars Born. He probably got like a ton of ton of score for that uh american sniper which we know swept us on the movie thing wedding crashers can't forget wedding crashers Crashers. oh fuck and he's he's part of the whole um (laughs) don't help him oh oh yeah that's what i did (laughs) he's also part of the whole uh uh, bat um what's the one with the fucking bachelor um wedding i'm not supposed to help you i'm gonna say bradley cooper i'm I'm going bradley cooper I You're think going the critics with... like Joaquin, but I think the folks like uh, Bradley. Yeah. Okay, so you're going with Bradley Cooper. Yes. Bradley Cooper has an 85.6. That's with, uh, you know, his sniper, and that's with his uh, all his uh, rocket raccooning. Yeah, uh, yeah. However, Joaquin, Joe Joaquin Fit Phoenix, P. Hone E. Nix is... 87.5. Damn. Wow, that's close. 87.5. Though. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Uh, I, the I, I, I loved him in Signs, though. I, I feel like Signs Stop was it. one of his finest performances. Oh, I did not like Signs. You and I really? Have yeah, I like that one. We're going to have to disagree on that one. All right. <laughs> that's all right. Hey, you know what? All right. Phil? 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 Yes, I'm ready. Uh, Channing Tatum. Oh, shit. All right. Or Donald Glover. So just based on Magic Mike Fever, I'm going to have to say Channing Tatum. Because I'm sure my wife created multiple accounts just to give him tomatoes. Nice. I, and don't forget. Maybe I did too. Who knows? Don't forget Magic Mike XXL. See, yeah. that, that was part of the fever. I, that was part of the fever. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Well, I'm going to give you Channing Tatum's first. Channing Tatum with a respectable 87.3%. Although, let's face it, who is going to Rotten Tomatoes? Do you don't have to answer that. That's rhetorical. Right, no. Just think about that. When I get this wrong, think about that. With coming in with 
Uh, an unfortunate uh, weaker 69.4% with Donald Glover. Nice. Uh, he's he's stronger in the television world. Yeah, I would say so. So, yeah. Hey, you get a yeah. point, Good. man. Hey, wait a minute. I, get to, I forget, forget Mike. Yeah. Get a, yeah. Okay, well, this is the first point that was coming. Oh, <laughs> yeah, well, it. I also have the... Which I could yeah. have been using, but <laughs> right, are you keeping score, Pete? You got okay. Yeah, yeah you got, got the board yeah, running. Good. All right. So, all right, we're going to just move on to Pete because, uh, in the interest of time here, let's move on. Um, I chose. Uh, do you know? Uh, there's a movie. Both of you. I don't know if you know this. Jennifer Lawrence and Chris Pratt were in. Um, what was it? it was the uh, Castaways in Outer Space? What was yeah, it? Which yeah, which I haven't seen, but pa Passengers. Passengers. Yeah, yeah. Right. it was so, okay. So I, I, yeah. I, this is the <laughs> pun intended. I shipped them on this particular um, item. So Jennifer Lawrence, Peter, or Christopher Pratt. Damn it! Okay, so J Law is like now. now I'm not going to help you. <laughs> J Law is like a fucking force of nature anymore. Um, she, she is. I think she is certainly the highest paid actress and yeah. one of the highest paid actors. Period. She's done a lot of good stuff, and I can't think of any turds that she's done. Anything that's been like a turd that yeah. she's one done. would have to think of all the properties that she's in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. And you're saying like the top ten, and she's been yeah, it's their their I'm top going, best. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going J Lo. Okay, all right. I mean, it, that's a tough choice because Chris Pratt's been doing some fucking great stuff too. Yeah. That's a yeah, tough he, choice, but I'm going J Lo. All right, all right. That's respectable. Gotcha. All right, Phil. What do you think? Do you do you agree with him? You know. I think I would have to agree with him, not just based on the properties, but based on at least in my head, you know, who I well, see. There's a lot going on there. for J law on the, on the interwebs. Yeah. I, I, I see the men of the interwebs maybe coming out more on mass to a slightly yeah. brown tomatoes. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, I mean, it could be, yeah. Let's, 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 let's not talk you know, about she's, the tomato. She's funny. She's funny. And, I even, she's and I even like her politics. Like yeah. she did a whole bunch of stuff for Represent Us, which is awesome. But anyway, yeah. go ahead, Mike. Give us yeah. a score. She's smart. She's gregarious. She's yeah. Traveling. So uh, you went with Jennifer Lawrence, a respectable eighty-eight point one percent. Christopher Pratt, uh, eighty-three point seven percent. Yes. So, very good. Yeah. Nice. Very good. Yeah. Oh, all right. So I, I do me right. Uh, <laughs> Phil, I do not envy this next matchup for you. Oh, snap. All right. Bring uh, it. So right. Um, it's a it's a guy. Guys against girls. First of all, like okay. say that. Uh, and uh, to to I, I would I would say some some uh, juggernauts in, in Hollywood. So we have uh, Marissa Tom Tomei. Love her. Okay. Yeah. Love her. Just love her. I know. I know. Love She's her. just let's just. All right, Just let's watch your watch your tomato splat. <laughs> right. And uh, Christian Bale. Monk. Oh, Christian Bale. that is a tough one. Yeah, I, I, I feel like emotionally torn over this. To be honest with you, yeah, yeah. I really do. Oh boy, I would be lying if I said that it wasn't a real toy. Uh, <laughs> By the way, thank you for giving me the hardest one. Hey, I, yeah. I just I just do the game, pal. That's I right. don't. Yeah. I'd like to believe that, but I don't. No, I do believe it. I do believe it. All right, Marissa Tomei or Christian Bale. Mm, mm, mm. Love them both. Love them both. Yes. In different ways, maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Or maybe in the same way. <laughs> All right, I got. I'm gonna go. Christian Bale. Okay. Well, yeah. let's let's go. I'll let you know. Christian Bale. He has a very respectable ninety-one point three. That's fucking high, man. That's good. That is high. That's yeah. good, but it doesn't make me feel mo any more confident yeah. about my choice. Does it beat was Marissa in Tomei? That's the question. Does it beat Teresa, uh, know, Marissa Tomei <laughs> with a 92.4? Oh. Oh. Should have gone with your peen. I mean, you're done. So, um, <laughs> all right. So, uh, Pete, what's the score? The score is currently one to one, but my question's up next. All right. Well, it, how many uh, of these are we gonna do, Mike? How many we got? Uh, we have one more, and then there's a tiebreaker. This is the last one. Right. And you if, if a we need a tiebreaker after this, I have one. You might go yeah. home with this prize. All right. Although you're already home, but uh, yeah. Yeah. you still go home with it. Okay. <laughs> uh, here we go, Peter. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a good one. Oh, this is a real good one too. Don Cheadle 
Mm-hmm. Okay, I like Don Cheadle. And I paired him with the Iron Man himself, Robert Downey Jr. Oh. Let's see. So is it good. is it Iron Man or is it the Iron Patriot? No, yes, the Iron the Iron Patriot? Yeah, yeah. 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 That's it is. See, that's what's tough about that is because this is not box machine, office. This is not box office earnings. This no. is how good an actor is. Don Cheadle's a fucking magnificent actor. He really he is, is. Such really a good is. actor. So, so good. good. Um, not to take anything away from Robert Downey Jr., he's a fucking great actor, too. Damn it. Um, I mean, because he's done such great works like Tropic Thunder. I mean, come on. Come on. Really? Don Cheadle, though, Boogie Nights. Fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, I know. I'm Hotel Rwanda. Fuck. You know what? It's a tough one, though. That is tough because, yeah. Um, you know, I'm going to. I like Robert Downey Jr., but honestly, I think Don Cheadle is a better actor. I just think he's a better actor. Uh, okay. Because Robert Downey Jr., he plays Robert Downey Jr. a lot, right? But Don Cheadle <laughs> plays different characters, yeah. right? Okay. So, uh, first of all, uh, Tori, um, I, I, I read, I just caught a glimpse out of the corner of my eye that said you, you didn't like Tropic Thunder. Um, I'm gonna have to ask you to watch it again, and uh, gonna have to watch it through my eyes, <laughs> and you'll love it. That said, um, you're put going, on, put on the hat. Right. You're get going a, with get, a, get, a, get a prosthetic white goatee. That's right. right. Prosthetic. <laughs> Those, a yes. pair of sharp glasses, like this yes. gentleman's wearing, and uh, right. let's shave your head. And then so it. I'm gonna go Don Cheadle, Mike. I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna try okay. it. I'm gonna, good I'm gonna go good. All right, all right. So all right, Don Cheadle. Uh, uh, Phil, I will tell you that this one was um a splitting of an ass hair um as well. So you each have one. I gave you each one of them. Okay. So, uh, the so we're gonna go with Don Cheadle, who we'll start with him first, who had a respectable uh ninety four point six. Wow. That's I nice. know that is like oh, yeah. that's your, that's your yeah. best ten movies. You know that's right. still really good. That's really good. That's Boogie and, Nights. Uh, I'm not surprised. Doesn't surprise me. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. Even with Tropic Thunder, Tori, <laughs> de- commanded <laughs> a ninety-four. Yes, point three. Oh, what? Yes. Wow. Damn. So, uh, congratulations, Pete. I, I just heard uh, that one out. Get that one now. Um, just, just for uh, for respect, because you know, I mean, you do win. But, uh, but I, I mean, since I went through the through this here, and I don't know. Do you know, uh, um, Phil? Do you know who Elizabeth Banks is? I do. She is phenomenal. And so, who would you say would be better, Elizabeth Banks or Idris Elba? Oh, that's a hard one too. Oh, no, isn't it? I think my my gut says Elizabeth Banks, just based on all the different things that she's done, and she's just yeah, so. She's done I love Idris Elba. Don't get me wrong, I love you, Idris. Um, yeah. but she's incredible. I mean, he's Still, incredible, but I guess I'm a little biased toward her just because my wife is in love with Idris Elba, and I don't want to give him anything else. I'm right, I'm in love with Idris Elba. Like anything yeah, I else? Know. Phil, I would let him. Nothing I would else. let him hold my hand in jail. I, I would <laughs> totally would. You let him hand you the soap on the rope after it gets shoved off your neck. We're in jail. I mean, yeah. it is what it is. All right. So, Phil, I want you to know that would there have, should there, or would there, should there, could there, could there have been a tiebreaker? You would have won the tiebreaker. I want you to leave knowing that. However, there wasn't a need for a tiebreaker. So, Peter, cue your champion music. Yeah. Yeah. Every once in a while, even a blind squirrel gets a nut. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. This there is all go. I get. This is all. This is all anyone gets. It's. Get. It is what it is. <laughs> so. All right. Enough of that. Enough of that. Right. Hey, I'm, I'm. I'm good. You know, I. I couldn't have lost to a. To a better dressed gentleman than. Thank you, than Peter. Hey, uh, you. You had. A, Pete, you had a couple of uh, remarks about your shirt. So you got. Uh, you got that. Yeah. Don't. That's my don't. Waylon Utani shirt, man. That's a great shirt. That don't great let Phil take that away from you. No. I love this shirt. Okay. Congratulations! Right, a funny, quick, funny story. Really yep. quick, funny okay. story because they were out of time. Bought myself a Waylon Utani shirt at a local comic shop. It was on sale, and there was it might have been a free comic book day. Maybe I, I can't remember. 
And uh, I'm like, oh, I'm going to get home. I'm going to put it on. I put it on. I'm like, oh, shit. Somehow I, <laughs> I should have taken a selfie. I, I definitely bought a ladies small shirt. Oh, nice. Somehow. Nice. I don't know how. And uh, I, but I still put that. I still put it on. Came out and said, look, everybody. And everyone was like, dad, what are you doing? Does the, does the hit, are you are you a, are you a, a hairy chested gentleman? Yes. Oh, oh I, I almost I'm all, almost wanted. I'm all man. Okay. We'll save so, that. For, we'll save that for the next time. Yeah, yeah that, that's sort of my my thing. I buy I most of my shirt or good chunk of the shirts that I wear that are logo shirts are corporate or fictitious corporations from movies. I got a Skynet uh -huh. shirt. I got a Whale Yutani shirt. Um, I, I, I like those a lot. Uh, I'm looking to get a one from the expanse. I want to get one for, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit, what's the name of that? Comp um, damn it. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but it's their, the prospecting company that, that, that they worked for at the beginning of the ice, the, 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 ice. the ice haulers. Yes. Yeah. I, so, I can't, Oh, I can't think of it. Right I now, love but, those books. I, I yeah. devour those books. Like before the series, the came new out. one's coming out like next month. Oh, I think I'm right. dying. I'm dying for, that for it. Now, now. But that's yeah, like, I'm, I'm, do I go back and listen to them all again before the one comes out? Oh, God, you can't. Yeah. They're still like bricks. I mean, yeah, you can. You can. Just move forward. It's good. And I all right. Let's all right. wrap it up. Phil, thanks a lot for coming on hey, again, and guys, we'll have you on again soon. Absolutely. Again, I could talk to you guys all night. You guys are fantastic. So thank everybody, you me out. Patreon, Phil Rossi, philrossimedia.com, Twitch at Phil Rossi Media, Twitter at Phil Rossi. And Instagram, Phil Rossi Media. Do all the things. And it's good. And I'm telling you, Phil is, is prolific as all get out. You'll get your story fixed. Trust me. Thank you, guys. You guys are great. Yes. Thank you so much for having me out. Yes. Right. Absolutely. All right, let's 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 do the thing. So here we go. All right, everybody. You have just enjoyed another awesome episode of The Mythwits. If you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher. And, Mike, our numbers are pretty high. Getting up there, like 700s. Yeah, yeah, thank you spread the word man spread the word yeah, please if, if, yeah if you all listen to this right now let's do it i thank you podcast podcast listener i thank you personally you the one listening right now in your car yes. uh, on your walk wherever you are i love you do the like follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate <laughs> and make sure to share your favorite episode on social media to help spread myth wits love over the entire planet I love tweet you. us at myth wits so that mike can see it because i won't see it because i don't do the twitter uh, and check us out at MythWits.com. MythWits is produced by Aether Forge Creations as part of the TSR Podcast Network. TSR, it's that company that makes games. They're awesome. Check out TSRPN.com and AetherForge.com for more cool stuff. A lot of good shows on the podcast network for TSR. A lot of good ones. Game School is a fantastic one. Uh, MythWits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it. Don't sell it. And, you know, I don't know, don't stab it with a knife under your bed no, when you're not, you know, wanting to go to sleep too well. Anyway, <clears throat> I didn't have one made up. I just made that up on the spot. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. And until next week, Mike? The Pure and Clean Water Company. Remember the cats! <laughs>